Where are you laying the blame? I'm blaming it on the economists as well, not on like leaving the Koch brothers out of this or, or Exxon, but I'm saying it's the ideological belief that they have that capitalism can handle any disturbance. Their vision of capitalism is a system which is so flexible and so innovative that you can, you know, smash it with a baseball bat and it'll bounce right back up again nice and healthy. So they don't think there's anything you can do to capitalism which can damage it. And what they're talking about is raising the global temperature so much that civilization, I think, will collapse. What they don't seem to understand is many, many things. But we have been living through a 10,000-year period of relatively stable climate. The variation in climate between 10,000 years ago and now is no more than one degree Celsius. We're actually being on a cooling trend until, until the industrial period. And that period meant we didn't have to move about as nomadic tribes all the time, getting away from changes in climate, changes in animals, changes in crops and so on, caused by dramatic variation in the climate. That gave us time to develop, you know, first of all, Sumerian civilization, Egyptian, Chinese, et cetera, et cetera. The stability of the climate may have been, probably was, we can't run an experiment to find out, was a major factor in us developing the societies we have now, which are fundamentally sedentary. We live in one place, we build in one place. But the cynic would say to you, yeah. and they, by the way, call themselves pragmatists, yeah. what's wrong with this, Steve? We just move. We're, Alaska looks all right, we'll move up there. What yeah. do you think about that? Slight trouble, we'll move faster than topsoil gets created. Again, the level of unreality. Detail. Yeah, we, details. We, we, we need, need soil to grow crops. We need land it. now? We're back to land. Yeah, I know, I know. So when you look at these studies by the economists, using the idea that you can use current GDP temperature data to predict what's going to happen with climate change. They then talk about the regions that are colder than optimal, and the optimal temperature, in their opinion, is an average of 12 degrees. So how do you pronounce it? Stavanger? Stavanger. Stavanger. Well, do very nicely because it'll get, get warmer, you know, whereas uh, Mexico City might do worse because it'll get warmer and it's already past the 12 degree average. And they simply say some parts that are colder than the optimum are going to get warmer and therefore improve. Parts that are warmer than the optimum are going to get hotter again and, and fall out. And overall, there's going to be this trivial change. And when we look around the globe, the parts of the globe that are going to benefit most, particularly Siberia. Now, I'm sure Vladimir is going to let us all move to, put to Siberia. <laughs> and I'm sure we're going to find plenty of topsoil there. Once the tundra all melts, then, of course, instantly there's going to be topsoil forming and it's going to be just as deep as the topsoil in, in Iowa. And we can grow all the crops in Siberia rather than Iowa. The lack of realism is just breathtaking. I don't know how anybody could read that stuff and say anything other than this is insane. But this had to pass referees and academic journals to be published. I don't want to be conspiratorial, mm. but is there another agenda? No. Are you sure about that? I've been in the economics departments for, like, as a profession for 30 years, as a student before that. They sincerely believe this stuff. And that's the trouble. It's even more dangerous than if it was a, a hidden agenda. There's, At least there's... if they were being funded by someone, we could yeah, stop that. That's right. You can pay Damn. them. If they don't believe it, you can pay them to say something else. When they believe it, you can't pay them to shut up. Mm -hmm.